here we are on Christmas morning. And last night, of course, we had all the children running around. Last week, we had our Christmas pageant, which involved um, a very reluctant sheep and a very reluctant Joseph, honestly, um, and just all sorts of fun and mayhem. And, and we, we read those beautiful stories from Matthew about angels and about dreams uh, that Joseph has in the middle of the night. And we read last night the story from Luke, you know, the classic Christmas story that, that we, we read and we ponder and we just awe at every year. And then I love how this morning, Christmas Day, we get the chance to step back and the readings that we have, the stories that we read, are not the narratives that, that we all know. They're, they're meditations that go underneath them, right? The, the, the story of John, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. We don't think of that as a Christmas story, but it is every bit as much the Christmas story. But it's going underneath those narratives that we read. And it's underpinning them and, and helping us to see things from other angles and in, and in new lights. And that's not to say that these readings, you know, we have these, this very lofty Hebrews reading. It talks about the difference between the only begotten Son, the glory of God, the one through whom God created all the worlds. And it talks about the differences between him and angels. And, and, it, and it's all sort of lofty and metaphysical. But these readings for us, as we meditate on them in this quiet space, on this cold but beautiful morning, they're not metaphysical, they're not abstract in the sense that they have no bearing on our lives. This is the truth that undergirds not only our faith, it's the foundation not only of this church, it's the foundation of the very universe. The Word who was with God and the Word who was God, that Word, that capital W Word, is more than just a word spoken, although it does remind us of Genesis when God speaks the world into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was. That's the Word of God bringing forth everything that is, but more than just simply a word spoken, that word is meant to, to signify the very logic of the universe, the very underpinnings of existence. You know, Hebrews says that, that through Jesus all things were created, and that through him all things are holding together. The very existence of the cosmos is held together by a person by a person who is the very incarnation, the personification, the enfleshment of love. The very existence of the universe. Everything would fall apart if not for love. And it is this love that was born on this day 2,000 years ago as a helpless child and placed in a feeding trough. How could we ever tire of that beautiful mystery? The love of God that was shown to us not in conquering armies, not in palaces of gold and silver, not even in buildings full of people. The love of God that is shown to us in the smallest of gestures, in the most unlikely of places. And that is the love that transforms the world, that was holding the whole world together from the very beginning. There is nothing more beautiful, nothing more worthy of our attention, of our adoration, nothing that should give us more joy. The greatest gift, the gift of the love of God, the logic of the universe, the word that spoke all things into existence is the very same word 
that the Gospel of John says became human and dwelt among us. There's a priest from England named Austin Farrar who preached in the mid-20th century. And I want to end with something that he preached on this day in the 60s. He says, How can I matter to God, we say? It makes no sense. God has the world, and even that he doesn't need. It is folly to even imagine God like myself, to credit him with eyes into which I could never look, a heart that could ever beat for my sorrows or joys, a hand that he could hold out to me. For even if the childish picture be allowed, that hand must be cupped to hold the universe. But I am a speck of dust on the stardust of the world. Yet Mary holds her finger out, and a divine hand closes on it. The maker of the world is born as a begging child, He begs for milk, and he does not know that it is milk for which he begs. We will not lift our hands to pull the love of God down to us, but he lifts his to pull human compassion down upon his cradle. So, the weakness of God proves stronger than men. And the folly of God proves wiser than men. Love is the strongest instrument of omnipotence for accomplishing those tasks he cares most dearly to perform. And this is how God brings his love to bear on human pride. By weakness, not by strength by need, not by bounty. It's the love of God that God shows to us in weakness, that God shows to us as a child in the manger. That is the love, the only love, that has the power to transform us to transform our hearts and our minds. It's the only love that will allow us to gather together in unity here. It's the only love that will and that is transforming the entire world. Amen.